right, come on in, come on in, come on in. Hey, Devante. Hey, Samantha. I think this is the first time you've been online with us. Welcome, welcome. Adam, how's it going? So come on in, let me know where you are in the world. Let me know where you are in the world. Hey, Kelvin. Hey, Keith. Let me know where you are in the world. Just let me know how long you've been playing. We have a really, really cool lesson for you today. Um, so come on in. We're just about ready to begin. Um, let's see. Tonight, I'm not going to keep you extremely long tonight. Now, I normally say that every night, uh, but <laughs> my goal is to get you in and out. Um, so let's see. Um, um, I see Kizzy from New York. Welcome. Boston's here. Kelvin, five years playing. Wow, nice. Nice. Um, let's see. Kelvin says your lessons have really helped me. Been using your 15 gospel endings in church services. Cool deal. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite videos. Uh, cool deal. Cool deal. Hey, Pablo. Hey, Josh. Hey, Patrick. All right. Okay. I think a few more people are still coming in, but we're going to go ahead and begin. Um, thing um i'm all right uh oh i think my computer just give me one second all right so can everyone hear me and can everyone still see me let me know by saying yes in the chat box um Okay, yeah, sorry about that. We just had a slight freeze. Okay. All right. Cool, dude. Everybody says yes. Harmel, thanks you. Cassandra, thanks. Cool. Kevin, Samantha, Devante. All right, cool, deal. All right, everyone can hear me. Okay, so today, what I want to do is I want to try to quickly get through the lesson. I want to talk about two different uh, crazy modulations to enhance your playing. Um, and then... Um, I'll try to go back and answer questions at the end. So for those who are watching the replay, um, one of the uh, main complaints is, you know, they don't want to have to sit through a full hour to get through the lesson. So I'm going to try to front load the lesson and then answer questions at the end. All right. Um, so when you ask a question, please, like, give me some detail because I'm going to be asking a few minutes after you, after the, whatever sparked your attention, sparked it. So definitely go back, um, um, and give me a detailed question. All right. Well, let's go ahead and begin. So I want to talk about two crazy modulations. I was um, playing some stuff and transcribing some things, 
And there's, there's a lesson I've been wanting to teach to you all for about three years now. I'm still saving that one, but that one inspired me to do this one. And so I'm going to be using the template song. Um, there's a common church song um, that goes, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. I'm doing it in the key of F. Um, and what I did was I actually created a lead sheet for you. So if you um, want to follow along with me, um, I'm going to put a link. Here's a link to the lead sheet for you. And you can follow along as I'm playing through the song and kind of see it. I'll try to write on the screen so you can see as well, but um, following the lead sheet is easier. So all you do is put your email, name and email address, and then confirm your email address, and it'll be it'll download to your computer. All right. Um, all right. Um, so the first type of modulation I want to talk about is called a pivot chord. All right, and although I'm, I'm trying to do the lesson up front, I definitely still want you to talk to me. So uh, can anyone tell me what is a pivot chord? What is that? Okay. And while you're writing your answers, I'll go ahead and kind of play through the song. So for those that don't have the lead sheet, you can kind of hear I go. So it goes something like this. Okay, so um, Kelvin has it. Kelvin says a pivot chord is a chord that belongs to the key you're modulating to. Um, yes, or a common chord, a chord that is common to where I am and to where I am going, right? In this case, um, um, well, let's get to it. So on this song, I think for the most part, I think everybody's kind of familiar with this. If you're not, definitely get the lead sheet. But because it's a common gospel song. Right here and this chord right here. What is this chord? Does anybody know? So I have G, F, D flat, F, G, B flat. I don't have to have the F in my right hand. So I have G and F in my left hand, then D flat, G, B flat in my right hand. What is this chord? Does anybody know? Cassandra has it right. G diminished seven. Well, not diminished. Not diminished. It's not diminished. Almost right. I'll give you a couple more seconds to see if they might get this. <laughs> Patrick says it's a nice chord. All right. So it's G half diminished seven. So G half diminished seven. I remember. So G fully diminished is... E, that sound, but I have F, so this means it's half diminished. Um, so, and the full, so this that's kind of the, the shortcut way to say it, G half diminished 7. Um, kind of the numerical way is kind of with G minor 7, flat 5. 
you see, so G minor 7 with the flat 5. So that would be, you see it written both ways. So let me, let me just make sure everyone knows that. All right, so I write on the screen. So you might see it written as G G minor 7 flat 5, like that, or G half diminished 7. So the circle with the slash do it is through it is half diminish. All right. So now this chord you think, well, what else could it be? Right? What else could it be? Well, I'm going to submit that it could be an E flat 9. E flat dominant 9. What do you think? E flat 9. So, what are, what are the notes of an E flat 9 chord? The notes would be E flat, G, B flat, D flat, and F. So have E flat major right here, plus um, plus the seventh, and then plus the nine. So there's the nine. There's the seven. So this is an E flat nine, written E flat nine. Now wait a minute. The notes of a G flat seven flat five or G half diminished sorry G minor seven flat five or G half diminished seven are G B flat D flat F. Now this looks strikingly familiar, this part and this part. They look exactly the same. The only thing I did was add the E flat. So if I play the same chord, and I just maybe add the E flat on the bottom. It's like an E flat 7 chord, or E flat 9, or regular E flat 9. Now where would an E flat 9 take us? Where would an E flat 9 chord take us? Yep, that's right. So it takes us to A flat. So, <laughs> so let me play it for you, and let's see if you can uh, uh, hear this. Uh, so here it is. Here's coming up. Here it is. Uh, did you hear that? I'm going to do the second half of that song so you can hear it again. <laughs> what do you think? All right, so pretty cool modulation. And it doesn't sound um, jarring or dissonant, right? So one more time, I'll play it. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, here it is. And then... So, that's the first modulation, is a, um, uh, well, well, I'm calling a pivot chord, um, y um, there are a few names for it, but we'll just stick with that one. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Let's voice it differently. All right. So I'm going to voice my G. So I'm going I'm to try it again. But this time, instead of voicing it like this, I'm going to voice it like. So I have some extensions in there. So my chord is still G half diminished 7. But I've added some extensions in there. So, so let's try the second half. hear that one more time okay yeah <laughs> all right now here's the second modulation I was sitting there thinking okay how might um, I get back to the key. I was initially in F, and I ended in A flat. Did you hear that? So I'm, I was thinking, how can I get back to F again? Um, and I'm going to do what is known as a um, a common tone modulation. In this case, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm not going to do one tone. I'm going to do several common tone modulation and just by its name um, it simply means you share tones in common uh, so you share tones in common right so um, let's see so I was sitting there thinking, and I'll walk you through my thought process, uh, and hopefully you can follow me, and I'll, I'll try to go slow and explain it, but I'm, I'm just going to walk you through my, my thought process. So after doing this, G half diminished 7, and changing keys, doing our, our this, this pivot kind of modulation, I wanted to go back, so I'm on this A flat major chord, but I wanted to go back to... F and do two five one and F, but I'm here. I want, but I want to go back to G minor to see F, right? I want A flat, but I want to get to G minor. What chord takes me to G minor? What's a great chord to take me to G minor? So let me know in the, in the chat box. So I'm on A flat, and I want to get to G minor. What's a quick and easy way to get there? All right, and yes, Ricardo has it. It's D7. Now, this one might, might trip you out a little bit, but here is, so I'm on A flat major. And I want to get to G minor. So I know D7 will take me to G minor. So, But going from A to a D7 is, uh, sorry, going from A flat major to a D7 is not the, you know, there's a common tone C there, but it's not the cleanest of modulations. It's not as clean. So... I thought, what if I use more than one tone? So I have this A flat major chord, right? And I want to go to D7. So this is where it kind of gets a little, um, little sneaky. But I use this A flat seven. I'm uh, sorry, this A flat major chord as my upper structure. So I go ahead and just put D7 on the bottom. That's a D7 flat nine flat five. <laughs> See it? So, 
let's go back. So I'm going. Here's my G set, G set minor seven five five. Here's my A flat seven. D seven flat nine flat five. time so I'm going yeah. all right all right does that make sense does that make sense So let me put it all together and kind of just play through the second half and um, let's see what happens. So I'm just going to do the second half, so not too long. Alright, um, let me add maybe a line over it. So now I'm not actually playing chords. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a chord in my left hand, but add a line in my right hand. So let's see. Just kind of see if that works as well. Um, so... <laughs> okay, so those are the two concepts that I wanted to share with you all today. Um, was this common tone? Oh, sorry, uh, the pivot chord, right? And it's it's chromatic because it's not diatonic to the key, so it's what we call it chromatic. Um, and then this common tone, where I use the A flat major and said I'm going to make it my upper structure. Uh, I'm going to make it my upper structure of my D7. So listen, if you are not sure of what I mean when I say upper structure, um, let's see. I want to share a link to... Um, a video I did. Um, if you've looked at a piano keyboard about a year and a half ago, let me share it with you. That covers upper structures, um, and it'll kind of make sense of this this whole idea. All right. All right. So. Um, Let's see, are there any questions? So go ahead and write detailed questions for me. Um, and so, and let me apologize. I just realized, I think Nariko said it, that the the live link said it, we were going to go live at 10. I do apologize. Uh, uh, I do apologize. We, we, know, we you know our time is 9.30. And so, uh, sorry about that. We did move it to 10 a few weeks ago, but we're back at 9.30. And so thank you all for being on. All right, so Nariko says, uh oh, sorry. Nariko says those chords convert major chords to minor mood. Yeah, I guess so. If you're taking an A flat major and then I p put a D7 underneath it and then go to G minor. So now we're, we're leading to both a, uh, to a minor chord, G minor. I guess in that sense, yeah. All right, so Kelvin says, loves your upper structure videos, both quarto and triadic. Oh, thanks, uh, Kelvin. Those are fun, fun videos. Um, speaking of that, just while, while I'm waiting on your questions, um, I'm not sure if you got a chance to check out our new site, um, but 
if you go to the store page and you look at the, um, I have uh, all of the resources there on the store page as well. Um, and for the seven triadic upper structures video, I have a 20 minute bonus video um, utilizing our DLS software where I'm playing for 20 minutes straight, no talking. You can see everything I'm playing. You can slow it down in real time, speed it up. It's, it's phenomenal software. And I'm just using upper structure after upper structure. Um, I think I didn't talk. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did it. <laughs> but that's a really cool uh, resource as well. Matter of fact, I'll put a link to that resource um, just in case um, you want to um, grab that. So I'm going to put a link in the chat box now. There's a link to that. Okay. Taco says altered is almost minus seven flat five. So there that. Okay. So Taco, when we say altered, most of the time, we're generally talking about dominant chords and adding alterations. Um, now, to his point, I'm assuming you're a guy. Uh, let's say so. Let's talk about this. Let's look at let's look at G7 dominant chord. Um, now let's do flat five, um, sharp nine. So you kind of get the same idea, kind of. So almost, yeah. Okay, let's see. Could you use this modulation of the song for Every Mountain by Kirk Carr? Hmm. Uh, well that song already has like modulations in it. Uh. Yeah, that's that's. A, I don't think I, Kelvin. I don't think I, I'd use in that just because this song has is moving between multiple keys. Um, I don't think I would. So for every mountain, oh, all right. So for every mountain, you brought me over. I, w I wouldn't really do that kind of thing on this. Mm. Okay. Noriko says, if possible, I'd like to hear you applying the chord progressions to certain melodies because I hear that chord progression takes the melody somewhere else. Let's see. Well, l well in this case, Noriko, I, I didn't take the melody somewhere else. The chord underneath, so here's the melody. We did kind of. Let me see. All right. So I'll try to be even more explicit with the melody. So on that part, there's the, it's F is in the melody. So I'm going to keep it and make it A flat major six with the F in the melody. 
and then now I'm gonna make a D7 sharp 9 sharp 5 keeping the F in the melody so I'm doing it in real time um, just kind of see what happens Do it one more time. I just kind of had a brain fart for a second. Mm. I can make that better. So. Yeah. So. Let's not make it that, let's make it. So, tell you what, let's do this. Um, let's do it that way. So, yeah, so that way, so now that, that, that's how I strictly stuck to the melody. Um, It can be used for the ending. If you wanted to do something really kind of deceptive, Enrico, you could use this idea for ending for sure. Um, um, this idea can definitely be applied. It is a sort of a deceptive cadence in a sense. It's a modulation because we're going to a different key, but it, it's deceptive in that sense as well. So sure, yeah, for sure. All right, any other questions? Let's see. I think I saw one that I missed. Um, okay, um, so let's see. See if any more questions come through. Hmm. Okay. Um, I hate, I hate Urban. All right, cool deal. Let's see. I think I saw one I missed. Alter is almost no, no, no. It's not. Alter scale is minor seven, flat five, flat eleven, flat eleven. Um, no, that's. Uh, I think you're probably meaning flat. From so minor seven, flat five. N yeah. So flat. No, no. Minor scale isn't flat eleven. I mean, sorry, the alter scale is in flat 11. Um, so alter scale, uh, let me just write it in the chat so you can have it. Tacos, one, flat nine, sharp nine, uh, three, flat five, three, flat five, uh, flat 13, flat seven, so flat 13, at 13, flat 7. Yeah. So it's seventh mode, so like, yeah. I see you, I see you writing in it there. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Super low grand. Okay. 
Um, but I think you're missing. Yeah, so ta taco flat four is the three. So no, no, not flat four. So just regular three. Okay. Uh, saw some other questions. Um, Sifa says, "What kind of board are you playing?" Um, this is a uh, Yamaha S90 ES. So it's basically the motif Yamaha motif, um, uh, without the sequencer. Um, okay. All right, any other questions? Let's see. Thabang says, can you please assess with the fingerings of the E-flat minor blues for more than one octave? Uh, playing 3-2, three, 3-2 two, three, two on the black keys. That's how I do it. Like that. Okay, and um, but if you want like a fingering guy, like a way to work through, um, kind of like a way to work through fingering, so you can figure these things out. Um, I did a <laughs> shameless plug. I did make a video that was I thought I at least I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> um, okay, and I just put it in the link there. Um, that kind of shows you how to figure out these fingerings. Uh, Kelvin, I'm so sorry. Like, uh, there's a time delay, so I think what you're hearing is about maybe a few minutes after me, where I am now. So I'm not sure what lick you're t referring to. Mm, could it be applied in the blues? Yeah, if you want to do some like cool blues, something or kind of something out for sure, you can kind of take this idea and run with it. Um, and then come back. A lot of West Coast blues definitely use this um, idea where they kind of come out. Um, All right. So, any more questions on these modulation ideas? Um, hola, Oscar. Que lo que? Um, Taco says E major, C major 7, F major 7, A major 7, C major 7, F major 7. In your opinion, why does it sound good? Because they have common tones. Uh, yeah, they have common tones. Um, there are a couple other reasons, but uh, that would lead me into a deeper discussion. Um, but the quick answer is um, they have common tones. All right, um, so let's see. Josh asks a really interesting question. How could, can this be applied to one chord vamps? This is interesting. If it's one chord. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. All right. So first thing. So let's say we're playing an F minor groove. So... Okay, wait, let me, let me move. Let me, let me not do F minor. Let me do D minor because Josh has said, like, so what? So we're going to be in D minor. All right, so we're in D minor. All right, now, if you go back and check out the record, and I'm embarrassed that I've forgotten, um, I can't, the name is escaping the bass player. Um, 
on on a, if you go and listen to a few of the albums where uh, a few of the recordings where they did so what on uh, one of these recordings on the first round of the chorus the bass player starts on G even though it's a D minor chord starts on G right which is kind of the same idea that we talked about earlier um, with this A flat if we look at it from if we treat it as upper structure thanks thanks Alan Paul Chambers This A flat becomes the upper structure, right? So this D, if I'm playing D minor, well, over G makes it like it's a G7 or G9, right? Kind of that idea. Uh, so yeah, on so on like one chord vamps, so maybe we can go to G. And all your D minor stuff works. So, so let's say you have like, like a, you're doing like a D melodic minor. G. Uh. Right. It all works. What if we did, um, instead of, d let's make it B in the bass. So it becomes B half diminished seven, right? So still all of your D minor stuff will work. You hear? All right. Does that make sense, uh, Josh? All right, any other questions about um, um, these two modulations? So we did like a pivot chord where we're pivoting from one key to another. Um, and then we did a uh, um, common tone and m multiple tones that were common. Okay, all right. Uh, are there any more questions? I'll give you a moment since I think I'm a little ahead of you you all. So let's see. Cassandra asks, do these modulations work better with specific scale degrees or purely based on where you're taking the harmony? Mm. Okay, so you can you can think I I'd say both. Um you could think like from the second scale degree, if it's half diminished, then I can I can do this particular move. You can think like that, or um, I generally think, where do I want to go? And then I figure out how to make the modulation happen where I am. Um, so that's personally how I think of it. Uh, where am I going, and how can I make where I am work for where I'm headed? Okay. All right. Any more questions about these modulation ideas? Okay. No more questions.
Any questions? Any more questions? Well, there's no more questions. I'm going to uh, stop right here. Okay. All right. So a uh, few things. Um, if you weren't able to download the lease sheet, I'll put that link back in the chat so you can have it. Um, that's all you do is put your name and email address and then go to your email and and confirm that you're not a robot <laughs> and your download will start. Okay. All right. Uh, so thank you all so much. Thanks, Alan. Um, and I will see you all next week at 930. So even if even if the uh, link says 10, the notification says 10, it's 930. And I'll try to correct the notification. Ah, right, thanks, Keith. All right. Thanks, Keith. And thanks for supporting us, Keith. I saw that come through. Um, so I really appreciate you, Keith. Um, and I think Keith, you're in the Atlanta area, so maybe one time we can get together, shed a little bit. Uh, Danny says, could I give a conclusion? I'll just uh, explain. Um, um well. All right, Danny, just a short conclusion is we have two types of modulations, um, a pivot chord and common tone, all right? Pivot chord is a chord that's common in both places, where you are and where you want to go, and common tones share common notes. Um, so, uh, mismo sonidos. Okay. All right. All right, so thank you all again. Uh, I don't think I see any more questions. Yeah, Keith. All right, let, we'll have to make that happen. Make that happen. Okay. And uh, uh, email me if you have any questions about accessing. I, you, sh you should have received a series of emails. I'll double check. Um, if you have any questions about it, definitely let me know, and I'll definitely be glad to answer. Okay. All right. Well, Thank you all again. I really appreciate y'all sticking out every week with me. This is this is really fun for me to get to share. Just teach idea after idea. Um, and so yeah, like like the video. This, th that helps me. Um, share it. Um, share it with your friends. I, I kind of want to help as many people as possible. That's our goal: helping musicians improve. So um, definitely uh, um, like the video. Um, and share it. All right. Well, if there's anything else, uh, thank you all again. Thanks, Abiel, Magu. Thanks, Boston, Alan, Michael, Papa Sai, Tony, um, Josh, Noriko, Oscar, Taco, Urban. Thank you all so much for being on the bang. Safest Howard, Kelvin. Thank you all so much. All right. And I will see you next week. Be blessed and happy practice.